to old times, y'all. Oh, that's all right. We're in chill mode right now. We might get in angry and bitter mood a couple hours from now, maybe. Because I noticed that my mood shifts. Like, after I've been at work for a while, then I start to get really pissy. <laughs> But the thing is, as pissed off as I get about like little stuff, I know that that's not the reason why I'm mad. My manager thinks that I'm mad because I don't eat meat. But that's not true, I do eat meat. I just don't eat meat all the time. Like we live in such a black or white world that if you don't do something all the time, it's like you don't do it at all. Like people are so shocked by the fact that I even have a laptop. All because I don't have a smartphone. I mean, I guess it is hypocritical, isn't it? Having some form of a computer at my house. But the only reason that I have it is to do YouTube. Like that's literally the whole reason I got the internet in my house. That's the reason why I decided to get a laptop, even though I, I knew that it probably wouldn't be a good thing for me. I did it for you, okay? Vortex, I did it for you. But, here's the thing. Say hi. Say hi, Vortex. Hi. Hello. That's my camcorder. In case you're wondering what it looks like, that's it. Okay? That's how I talk to you, Vortex. <laughs> Should I switch lanes? Not yet. She's got so much blues. The best friend can know. It's the best part of the whole song right here. so defensive about my lifestyle to the extent that I'm offensive um it's cause when I turned 30 I just realized that like I was gonna have this normal ass life you know and when I started doing comedy it like made so much sense like all these puzzle pieces started coming together and I talked to other people that had known me for a long time and it made sense to them too. And they were like, man, I can't believe I didn't see it before. And uh, I talked to this uh, former sponsor in Alcoholics Anonymous and she was like, man, like, I had no idea how funny you are. But I think it's because like, you know, you focus on it and it's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I started to realize, you know, how much of a comedian I, I really was. And so, because that became my focus, it, it allowed that bizarre sense of humor of mine to be completely exposed. And, you know, with politics and religion and all that, it's really opened my eyes to a lot of things. 
like you know how basically everybody's the same piece of shit. I mention this a lot. Um, here I am, Vortex. Here I am. I know you miss seeing me. So. Like, got the George Washington hair going on. <laughs> yeah. Bring it out a little bit more. There you go. <laughs> That's some John Adams right there. Yeah, it's John Adams. Did they hate each other? No, no, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson hated each other. And they died the same day. Do you think that's a coincidence? Come on, man. Come on. Come on! Yeah. I'm very funny. But yeah, I think that I'm funny because of my, like, depression or whatever. Like, because I have to be. It's, it is a defense mechanism, you know? Like, why wouldn't it be a defense mechanism? And it's totally human to have defense mechanisms. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. I forgot I had this little beret in. <laughs> beret. <laughs> Barrette. <laughs> beret is like one of those French hats. Ah. <laughs> See that right there? That's an example of how funny I am. Without even trying, I'm just fucking stupid, you know? Like. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know stuff that the general public knows, but I know stuff that the general public don't know, okay? Um, but yeah, I was just thinking about, you know, why am I so defensive about my lifestyle? And why am I such an offensive person as a whole? And it really is because, like, I fucking know myself. And I'm sure that that does have, like, some areas where, you know, I... I'm tooting my horn and I'm acting like I'm better than everybody. And I really, I don't like that about myself. And so I'm quicker to call myself out on that. I'm quicker to realize when I'm doing that. But that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna still be angry or bitter or whatever the fuck. I mean, I think that like transformation is something that only God can do. And. You know, that's why I got on to my priest about, like, getting mad because I continue to swear. It's like, if that's, a, it's, if that's something that I'm supposed to let go of, I'll let go of it. And it's not going to be on my own volition. It's just going to be, like, something that happens. You know? Like, a lot of times, you just kind of experience things, you know? You, it's a cycle. Like everything's a cycle, so you just go through the motions of life, and then one day you wake up and you're like, holy shit, I haven't taken a drink in 12 years, and I do stand-up comedy, where normally I would, I would just stay at home and, you know, feel sorry for myself because I, I, I didn't know, you know, where to take this, and you know, I, I don't care if you criticize me, but just please, like, do something. Like, do some art or something, you know? It's like, I don't, I, I just don't care about somebody's opinion. Like, even if they like me, I'm sorry, but it's like, I mean, obviously I do care somewhat or I won't be talking about it. But, like, it doesn't, you know, hold any sort of relevance because you're not making things, you know? Like, artists, I, I know this sounds really cheesy and kind of pretentious, but I really feel like, in a way, we carry the weight of the world. You know how women feel? This is the reason why women make good artists. It's because we have this uterus, and it's like we're constantly holding it in court, you know? Like, what should we do with this? Should we contribute to the world? Well, it's like, I'm not making babies because, like, I'm too paranoid to have a kid, dude. I get paranoid when I see other people's kids and I pray for them and I, I just hope that they remain innocent, dude. Like, I would be freaking out like every five minutes thinking about what what if something's happened to my kid? What if somebody touched my kid? You know, like, if, if I didn't keep my eye on them nonstop, which I feel like that would be, 
you know, not that good of a thing. Damn, that's three cops. That's three cops chasing after, I'm assuming, one motherfucker. Huh. I wonder if they're gonna get him. Hmm. Only time will tell, right? But we'll never know. We'll never know because we'll be at work and we'll probably forget all about it. We'll probably forget all about it in three minutes. <laughs> so we'll be talking about something else. But, um, probably less time than that. Probably more like, you know, 45 seconds, really. Yeah. That's true. But, you know, there's some people that have watched my shit and they disagree with me on, on certain points. And that's fine. But I'm more likely to take them seriously because they put out a lot of videos. So they are making things and putting themselves out there creatively. So they're making a sacrifice in relation to their creativity, okay? Because it takes a piece out of you every time. And I think that the reason why like crazy people are better at art is because like we're not very good at the life shit. You know, I told y'all, just reading paperwork makes me fucking break down, okay? So, it's just regular life stuff just boggles my mind, you know? It's like, I get that there's value in a lot of different things, but I don't have to have it to understand the value of it. In fact, that's my biggest problem with society is that they have these things and they don't appreciate them. I know I've mentioned this before. But I genuinely appreciate people for watching my shit, but like, <sighs> I'm not, like, I'm sorry if, you know, I don't wanna, you know, reach out more. This is the only way that I can. I guess that's, <sighs> that's my fucking out. I mean, you can ask fucking Ronit, dude. Ronit's my best friend. And she'll tell you, yeah, like, she isolates herself. Yeah, she, she has to, like, go outside and talk to herself. Or go to the bathroom and talk to herself. Like, so people, like, asking me to be part of the world more, it's like they're asking me to go against my own conscience and not even, not be myself, you know? Could you just, you know, deny, like, who you are? Could you deny, like, your experience? Like, I was just talking to this dude last night who came out when he was, like, 34. And he'd never had sex. And he was a minister and all that. And he said that if he didn't come out as gay, he was gonna kill himself. Now, I won't just assume, oh, it's because of the culture. It's because of the culture, you know? That's why he's coming forward because he's brainwashed or whatever the fuck. It's like, I mean, his mannerisms strongly suggested that he was a homosexual. But he was cool, you know, and, and like, I don't want people to kill themselves all because, you know, they're not allowing themselves to be free. Like, it's a, it's a double, triple, quadruple sword. Because, you know, I mean, homosexuality is a sin. But if, if somebody is like having those thoughts and their hormones are all screwy and you know they desire to have sexual intercourse with members of the same sex, then it's like, I just think that that's a weird thing to like try to change in somebody, you know? It's like certain types of food, you know? You either like it or you don't until your tastes change, right? Oh my goodness. <laughs> what if your sexual preference changes every seven years? <gasps> that would be interesting. But you know, in relation to mental illness, you know, like a lot of times it gets worse. In certain ways it gets better, in other ways it gets worse. If you can accept your condition, if you can accept the way that you are, you'll figure out a way to work with it. 
and I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job seeing as how I didn't kill myself. So, you know, people get on to me about, you know, they just don't understand like the lone wolf. I was literally born on the day of the lone wolf, okay? Something tells me that that person was on their phone. Something. A little, a little bird, a little bird told me that the person driving the white truck was on his smartphone and that's why he did not go when it was his turn to go. <laughs> oh, do you wish those people commit suicide? Why is that wrong to want that? Why is that wrong? If more people committed suicide, like, that would stop climate change, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, that would definitely do what Bill Gates is trying to do. You know? Limit the population, right? Right? So bro neat last night. said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to say this in a way that's not, it's not gonna get the video taken down. But she said, I'm going to break the vaccine. <laughs> I ain't taking no booster schmooster. <laughs> She's so funny. It kills me because like, most of the people in the comedy scene, like, she annoys them so much. She annoys them because they, they don't understand what it's like to be as free as her. Like, they're so uptight. Like, the reason why we get along so well is because we're both free in the same way. And she can spend ridiculous amounts of time by herself. And she talks to God all the time. And she has her little spiritual rituals. And she lights her Shabbat candles. You know? She does all that stuff. And I really respect that. Oh my goodness, I was looking for this. I was looking for it and then I found it. Don't she love that? I always find the stuff that I lose. It's just frustrating. Like, Roni told me that she had lost her glasses for like two days. She couldn't find her glasses and she was just really frustrated. And so I immediately said a prayer for her, and she found them. So, I know that God listens to me, but it's also because like we're both spiritual. So we both believe, we both have faith. If you send a prayer about somebody, well, I don't, I don't wanna speak for God, so let's not, let's not do that. Um, <laughs> but like, I've just noticed that if, if two believers talk about God and one of them prays for the other one, it tends to work. Versus somebody that's a non-believer that's just going to go, why are you praying for me? You know, like, appreciate the sentiment, but thanks, but no thanks, you know? It's like... There are definitely those people out there that are really, really skeptical about prayer. Oh my goodness, it feels so much better outside today. It's really humid right now. Yeah, but I think that my biggest criticism of everybody um, is that they just don't make anything. And that's why I, I, like, criticize my fans if they're not doing that. You know, but most of my fans are artists. That's why people consider me to be a comedian's comedian. Because, like, they know that I'm, like, an extra, extra comedian. Like, I'm like super duper comedian um, or something. See, look at that. 
Look at that. I keep talking about like how I talk to the devil. Well, because I feel like with God, if you talk about God, a lot of people think it's cheesy. But if I talk about the devil, um, people find that funny. And they're like, oh, she's, she's satirizing, right? Nobody talks to the devil. That's silly shit. But we do it all the time. Do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. We do it all the time. Do it all the time. Y'all should listen to Violent Femmes if you don't already. Forgot the name of that album. It's it's the one that has that uh, Blister in the Sun song. It's track one. And the song that I just sang is track two. Is it? I hope you know that this will go down on your permanent record. I think that's an amazing impression of Gordon Gano, and if you don't agree, you're wrong, okay? Um, yeah, it's a great album. If you have a chance to listen to it, you should listen to it. I believe it came out in, I think, 1981 or 1982. Music was so much better back in the day. And I think it's possible for, for people to make good music still. I think <laughs> Ritz got on to me about, like, he said, art's not dead. Stop saying that. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. It's not dead. It's not dead. Because we have to revive it, right? It's, it's incapacitated. How about that? It's incapacitated. That's funny. You should, you should talk about that on stage. You should do CPR on art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should. That would be funny. That'd be really funny if I had like a dummy. No, oh, fuck that. It's like expensive. Unless I found one at Goodwill or something. Ooh, look. <laughs> I feel like I'm part of this moment right now because I have thrown multiple bags of trash into that dumpster. <laughs> Goodbye, trash. See, that's so crazy that they have a whole fucking vehicle that does that. You know? I don't know. I just, I'm just kind of amazed at like the stuff that they've invented. You know, it's like they've invented all these things to make people's jobs easier. They've invented all these things to make life, um, well, I think it complicates things quite a bit. Like that's a form of technology right there, you know? Think green, think clean. Bye-bye. But, you know. I was thinking about this last night because of like all my shit talk about like the industrial revolution and everything. And I was like, what if we had like none of this stuff? Like what if like it all went away? But that's what a lot of people think. It's like the song Imagine by John Lennon. Only even worse. <laughs> well, we're just so accustomed to things, you know? And I was like, Amy, it's real easy to say that, oh, things would be better, but you don't know that because you didn't actually live back in the day. You didn't live in like the 1600s and the 1700s. And But that's the thing though, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't know, right? 
I wouldn't know if I was missing out on anything. No, it'd be like that song by the Talking Heads, Nothing But Flowers. Yeah, that song was written in 89. And you know, like, all these artists from the 80s, like, all these filmmakers, like, predicted everything that's happening. And I don't know, were, were they, like, were they paid to write stories and songs about what's happening now? You tell me, Vortex. You tell me. But I stand by it. The best art was made in the 80s. The best bands came from the 80s. The best movies were in the 80s. Amy Gross, brought to you by the 80s. November 28th, 1985, Thanksgiving Day, motherfucker. You should be thankful for my existence. I wasn't for a long time, but then I discovered that I was just a comedian, so I had to be depressed.